Welcome to LiveBait.tv. We're here in Toronto on this beautiful evening outside the Harbourfront Centre. Uh, tonight's our international reading series, and we get the privilege of listening to Ian McEwen read from his new book on Chesil Beach. They were young, educated, and both virgins on this, their wedding night, and they lived in a time when a conversation about sexual difficulties was plainly impossible. But it is never easy. They had just sat down to supper in a tiny sitting room on the first floor of Georgian Inn. In the next room, visible through the open door, was a four-poster bed, rather narrow, whose bed cover was pure white and stretched startlingly smooth as though by no human hand. You should describe just briefly the, um, this extraordinary geological feature because I, I, I'm not sure people realize it's the, it's the cover image, um, but it, it, the shingle itself. Yes, I mean, um, it's, it's a, sh well, here we go. Uh, it's a, a spit of land running uh, somewhere between 18 and 20 miles east-west and flooded in inland is this lagoon known as the Fleet. And on the other side is the English Channel. And the spit is sort of rounded like that. And it's about 200 yards across. And seen from the air, it just looks like a very, very narrow bridge. Once you're out on it, uh, and it's very tedious walking, as you know, walking on shingles is very tiring. Uh, once you're out on it, you can't cut off and go inland unless you swim across mm -hmm. the fleet. Mm -hmm. So if you commit to the walk, once you're past halfway, you really, it is a really, uh, it's a trudge. And because of that, and because the sea has rip tides and dangerous currents, so no one swims there much, it's generally deserted, even on the yeah. most beautiful days. So, you know, if you are looking for a, a good spot in southern England, if you're traveling around, I, I'd recommend it. <laughs> um, it's absolutely very, uh, you know, a gorgeous place. So where, where then does Unchesel Beach fit in your, with your other fiction? Oh, I, I don't think that's Saturday. Me. That's other people's problems. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just do the next thing. You know, the literary uh, theorist. Uh, no, I have no idea. Uh, but was it a, was it a, a I mean, it's, a, it's such a delightful read. Was it a fun project to write? Was it, a, was it a, an especially tough book to write? It was quite difficult, actually. I, no, I, I never thought it was fun. Uh, uh, I wrote the first 3,000 words, much of which I read, oh, some of which I read this evening, and then I just didn't go near it for six months, eight months. I thought, have I started something? And I kept looking it over again and thinking, do I want to commit to this? You know, is this the thing I want to be doing? I couldn't quite make up my mind, and then suddenly started, it, it, it suddenly took care of itself for at least um, two or three months, and I realized I was committed to writing a short novel. I had in mind some other book that I wanted to write. Uh, also set in 1962, so I was, I was very hesitant at first about this commitment. It's sort of like deciding to get married, really. Uh, you know, you're going to live with this book for a while. Um, and, you, and I also know that, I do know now how bad novels get written. Um, they get written because you, you've spent so much damn time on the thing uh, that if you stop now, you have to start all over again with something else.